Hey guys, today I want to talk about expat rookie mistakes. A lot of guys out there are saying, what kind of rookie mistakes are we, are we talking about here? You know, there's a lot of rookie mistakes that we can fall into, both with women, uh, finding property, all kinds of things. And I'm going to cover a few of those things today. A lot of the stuff I've covered in the past, um, some of the stuff I'm going to get a little bit deeper into. Uh, one of the biggest things over here that, that people um, make mistakes about is, is this. When they come over here, they start giving out way too much information. We did a, a whole video on this before. Um, don't give people any information you don't have to give out. You know, you wanna tell them about where you came from, stuff like that. If people start asking about money, where you get your money from, where your pensions are from, where you retired from, you don't give out that information to people around here. Don't even give it out to expats for that matter. Don't tell people where your money comes from. Don't tell people. A lot of people guess what I make and a lot of, there's even vloggers out there that think that they know about where my money comes from. And um, most of them don't really know the truth. Um, I worked for a municipality for a while and I, I, I get a lot of my income from that. We've got people out there saying I get 100% disability. I do not get 100% disability. Um, and this is the problem. You know, pe people will extrapolate information off a little bit of information and try to make it into some some like news flash that so-and-so is making this much money or is getting this money off of this because they think because people want to know everything about people they want to they want to get nosy and it's not their right to to to, to know that stuff don't let people know your information don't especially don't let women know your information but don't let expats know your information because the expats can be worse than the women with your information sometimes you know they can be terrible with your information don't tell people unless you have really rock solid friends that you talk to or you you you, you trust because they're, they're 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 like your caretaker if you get sick i have friends around here that if i get sick or something like that i would count on them to take care of me i need them to know a little information about me you know and those those are the people you tell things to you know but with women here, unless you're married to a woman, I wouldn't give her too much information. In fact, if, if she starts asking you information, I wouldn't even give her the truthful information because that way there keeps her wondering. Just just keep people in the more people in the dark over here because they'll they'll use that and they'll use it against you later on at some time and, and you'll you'll find out on your own if you give that information out. Trust me. Okay? You will find out. The other thing over here is when you when guys are coming over here, they're getting married way too fast. I, I always have people coming over here calling me up saying, hey, Steve, I'm coming over in a week. I'm getting married two weeks later. Um, any advice you can give me? It's like, yeah, don't get married, dude. You just, you, you don't even know this girl. You, have you come over here and met her yet? No, I haven't. You know, I, I talked to her for two years online, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting married to her. Big mistake. You know, and then we got the other guys that this is, a, this is the, the biggest mess, I think, is people that get married online and stuff like that. The people that are getting married online, that's a really, really rookie mistake right there. It's, a, it's the dumbest mistake that you can, you can make. And, and it's, it's not something that you want to do. The other thing over here is, 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 is finding places to live. Some guys come over here and they, they go for these places and gated communities and stuff like that. Is a, and those aren't always the best places sometimes. I tell people they're great places to stay if you want a pool and you need the gated services. They are good places. But, you know, and, and I would actually someday like to move into a gated community or a place that has a guard there or something like that in the future, possibly way in the future, you know, when I, when I settle down a little bit more. But what I want to do is, is, is tell you guys, be careful of that because that's not always the best places. Sometimes those guards there give out all your information because they start getting information because they see a lot of stuff. And some of these guards, you know, if, you, if you're dating people, they'll even tell the other, other girls that come in that you're dating, hey, he's already seeing somebody, you know, because they want to start dating that girl or whatever. It happens all the time in these gated communities. The guys that live over there have told me that some of these guards were, were, were giving out information, private information. And the management doesn't even talk to them about this, about not doing stuff like that. So, you know, you really got to think that you, you really can't trust people nowadays. It's just it's just a fact of life. And in the Philippines, I, I you know, a, a lot of people see Filipinos as, as the friendliest people in the world, but they're not good with information sometimes. And a lot of people are. But I mean, I think even Filipinos would tell you that that there's a, a huge gossip community out there. And, you know, I'm not saying everybody's into that because they're not. You know, I've been amongst Filipinos that I trust. I trust with anything. <clears throat> and there's some people that 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 I don't trust. You know, I've been with Filipinos that have been friends with me for four years, and then I've seen them turn on me. It's 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 happened. It's a, it's unfortunate, but it happens. 
be careful who you who you who you trust over here. A lot of guys that come over here, they're very naive when they come over here. I don't care if you're 60 or 65 or 70 or 40 or 30. A lot of guys that come in, are coming here, they're naive. They have this trust of people too much, and then they get bitten. And when they get bitten, then they then then they start realizing what can happen to you in the Philippines. So when you come over here, guys, and also remember, when you're looking for property, a hundred dollar place compared to a four hundred dollar place, there's not really that much difference between the two. You know, what the, the places are, are basically the, the same, except you might have a pool or something like that. You might not have a guard. My place over here is just like a gated community kind of. It's 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 very protective over here. I have a nice place. It's cool. I have AC. I have a nice little house here. I have I have good neighbors, and it's quiet here. Now. I can go downtown, I can go to Hope Residences, I can get the gated community, pay $400 and be right next to the mall, or I can pay a, 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 a tricycle to take me over to the mall from here. And I save myself $300 or more, you know? I mean, I pay $80 and down there, I'd probably pay 400 or more for, for, for a small apartment that's smaller than my apartment, actually. Yeah, they might have the pool. Yes, that's an added bonus. There's places I can walk outside. There's a place I can sit outside, things like that. I can get all that. Yes, that's all. That's all true. But is it worth it that for that extra three hundred? I can come over here and I can sit out here in this cabana. I have a place to sit. I can go down the street and use the pool at Villa Feliciana. Um, these are these are mis rookie mistakes. If you're coming over here and you're looking for cheap um, cheap digs to stay at, shop around. Don't just jump on anything. Stay in a, um, a place that's fairly decent and cheap, an Airbnb for a while, and, and shop around the, if that's the place you want to stay. And then don't do anything for more than like three months or whatever. But if you're going to go into a place and you're going to stay there and you know you're going to stay there and you're happy there, then start putting money in the place. First, stay in a place that might have AC and everything that you need in there for a while. And just don't put any... Don't fix it up yet till you know that that's the place that you want to stay. Then do a long-term lease or something like that. If you know you really, really want to stay there. And only if you know that you really want to stay there. Because, you know, if you're going to be putting stuff in there and putting shelves up and cabinets and things like that. And even though it's a rental, some guys would say, well, why would I do that, Steve? Because you want to be comfortable. And it's so cheap. When you're paying 60 or $80 for an apartment, what do you care if you put in a, a couple of hundred dollars into cabinets or shelving or something like that? It's not a big deal. So what, you're leaving behind. A lot of guys say, well, I'm not gonna fix up somebody else's place. Well, if you wanna be comfortable in there, you will. You know, if you're gonna be in there for two or three years or four years, or you're expecting to stay there till you die, maybe, maybe you, you should do that. And then it's worth it. Then it's worth it, you know, because it, it, you know those are the mistakes that people make. The other thing is buying a motorcycle or a car. If you're in a place that you don't need that, why would you do it? I mean, some people want the motorcycle. It's a choice. I can understand the motorcycle, but to get a car or something like that, I really don't think it's really needed. A motorcycle, get a used one or something at first, you know, unless you really need the new one, you know, then get the, get the new one. But be careful, you know, before you do stuff. Like that. Think it, really think it out, you know, use your, use your head, try to figure things out. Don't make a, a mistake and then say, oh, geez, man, I spent, you know, 1500 bucks on a motorcycle or 1200 bucks on a motorcycle now i'm kind of kicking my butt because i really should have waited you know what i mean because i got transportation all over here and i don't feel safe on the motorcycle or whatever i mean we have people here that that love their motorcycles love their vehicles we have a whole bunch of cars that are usually parked up there and stuff and motorcycles that are parked up there and and they they love traveling around and some people love having their vehicles here and and sometimes it's good if you if you're a good driver and you think you can put up with the philippine driving here Hey, have at it, you know, but be careful, guys. Be careful, especially with the girlfriend thing here. Be careful about that. Be careful what you tell your girlfriends over here. Be careful what you tell people over here. Be careful what you tell your your friends or your girlfriend's relatives or what have you. Do not give out more information than you have to. I can't stress that enough. More people have gotten bit in the Philippines in the rear end by that than probably anything else by giving out too much information I've fallen victim to that. Other people have fallen victim to that with their girlfriends, their, their wives, even their wives in some cases when they went through divorces or whatever. We've got several guys here now that are going through divorces and breakups and stuff like that. And they're getting bitten really bad for stuff, information that they gave out that they should have never gave out. And these, these people go after these guys really, really hardcore 
and 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 they become real victim the true victims are, are the guys afterwards and especially when you're an older guy you know and you're going through this it's 10 times harder than when you're in your 20s or 30s to go through that because of the stress anxiety and it, it ages you it does things to you it does it, it, it just it, it, it takes a harder toll on you now versus when you were in your 20s or 30s and most of the guys that I'm seeing we, we have a couple of guys that are going through the divorces now are going through that right now and I can see the stress on some of these guys and I hear the stress in their voices when they're talking to me you can hear it in their voices and you can see it in, in them that it's really bothering them and it's taking them down anyway guys God bless I hope that helps you you guys that are coming in here that you listen to some of this advice because this advice you know the rookie mistakes that you make over here pay attention don't come right in here you know gangbusters and go crazy slow down take it easy guys god bless